Hello and welcome back to Crypto Live Week. My name is Ken Garofalo and we're here live at Futurist 19 in Toronto. And we have the pleasure to speak with today Wayne Chen of Interlabs Technology Corp. How are you doing today, Wayne? Good, thanks. How are you doing today? Doing excellent. I'm really glad to have you on our show today. Pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And so we're going to go into a little bit uh, about your company here. Uh, first off, I just want to note that you guys are actually listed on a stock exchange, which is kind of rare for a blockchain-focused company. And that's the TSX, that's the Toronto Venture Exchange. That's right, yeah. So we, uh, we're listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Uh, we've been uh, basically back trading on uh, TSX Venture uh, since the uh, end of May. So we've been trading in, uh, and there's a market there. Uh, it's, uh, a lot of people are trading the, the stock itself uh, since for about two and a half months now. So yeah. Curious, yeah. do you know off the top of your head the market cap of the stock? Yeah, the market cap right now is roughly per share is trading about a dollar. So the market cap total right now is around seven, close just under eight million right now. Oh wow, that's huge. That's huge, yeah. yeah, yeah. So for given the size of what we have right now, yeah, it's, it's considered pretty pretty substantial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So excellent. And now you have uh, you're, you're sort of doing business as a different company name. I want to give you the opportunity to clarify the difference between the two. So that's going to be Coin Curve, yes. and then you have, of course, the official name, the Interlapse uh, Technology Corp, which is yeah. the the stock the stock name. Yeah, that's right. So Interlapse Technologies Corp is basically the the public platform that we have, and uh, Coin Curve is our flagship product, uh, the go to market, uh, and that's kind of where we're focused all of our attention on is the the development of Coin Curve, the expansion of Coin Curve into uh, additional countries as as we uh, move forward, and really it's a about the adoption of uh, delivering mass adoption of virtual currencies through the Coin Curve platform, and then we have uh, the pleasure of using Interlabs Technologies as our technology issuer to kind of broadcast that message to the whole world and hopefully build some credibility in the whole in the crypto industry space. And uh, and yeah, hopefully that transcends you know past just Canada and to the rest of the world, such as Southeast Asia, which we're going to be hit, hitting heavily fairly soon. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get into that in a second. So the big focus here is mass adoption, and that's the Coin Curve platform. Tell us exactly what the Coin Curve platform does to enable mass adoption. Yeah, so the CoinCurve platform itself, it really is, uh, it's, a, it's pretty simple. So the idea here is the lowest entry to barrier uh, for people to basically onboard. Uh, the idea is that people should be able to buy Bitcoins or Bitcoin Cash, um, utility coins, and they should be able to spend it. And we build a platform that allows them to basically fill up a couple of screens, first name, last name, email address, mobile number, and a recording of your voice, and then basically that's that's it. And then we uh, you send, a, uh, send a payment to us once we receive it, uh, KYC our customers, we basically now send the coins to their wallets. That is not custodial as well. So we believe in easy adoption, easy onboarding, and, and most importantly security. Uh, beginning and uh, one thing I do want to get into is a non-custodial service where you know when people buy from us we actually send coins to their own personal wallets so we don't hold custody of their coins so it, it, it reduces liability risk as well as you know this is how Bitcoin is supposed to be used and um, you know giving the people the ability to actually physically own it themselves versus exchange holding on their behalf. Okay, so yeah. in any point of that process, are you holding the coins in a hot wallet, cold wallet? No, we're not actually. So we don't hold any uh, flow, I mean, very minimal flow, uh, but really it's a direct kind of conversion at, at the sale value. And then once we receive the payment, we basically per, uh, use our liquidity provider to convert basically a fiat currency into uh, cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, and then send it directly to their wallets. Yeah. Okay, so again, the whole goal here is mass adoption with CoinCurve, enabling users to uh, have a low barrier of entry into assets like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Correct, yeah. So tell us exactly why just those two assets. Yeah, and that's a good. That's a great question. And um, uh, I think Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. I think those are the kind of the fact of uh, virtual currencies that we've seen. And, and the reason why is because they have the biggest adoption rate right now. Uh, they are the most. Uh, I, I would say. I mean, not that any coin is stable, but they're at least more stable than the rest of the kind of altcoins, as people call it. And, and the most important part is the fact that Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash are the most accepted payment coins uh, or payment virtual currencies in the whole world, right? So you can actually buy things, you know, pay for services, pay for goods and, and products using Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin Cash. So there's a lot of communities of these coins that are, are adopting these uh, virtual currencies and accepting them. And uh, we really want to fuel the the kind of adoption of people to, to buy uh, products with virtual currencies. And if we don't have that, I think um, I think that's a big de detriment to the whole kind of industry. So we want to kind of feel that movement and hopefully promote them and, and get people using it and spending it and, and buying it, not just buy it, but buying it and spending it. So it's a big, yeah. big thing. And I think the whole industry can appreciate what you're doing there because it benefits all of us if people are accepting this as payment 
it, it gives a, an air of legitimacy to the asset itself. Very much so. And you know, we always talk about how volatile Bitcoin is. You know, it goes up and down. You know, in thousands of dollars sometimes over a night, over a weekend. Right. And that's not great. You know, you know, for any currency to be usable in this world, it needs to be stable, right? Mm -hmm. So, how do you get a currency to be stable? It needs to have more frequency of use. Mm -hmm. and, and that's you know, I can't be paying for a coffee that's five dollars today and twenty five dollars tomorrow. Right. That's not going to work, <laughs> right? So, a lot of people are reluctant to spend because they rather hold on to it and hedge it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's okay. I mean, there are the traders, and that's the big market themselves. Lots of exchanges all over the world. In Canada, there's, there's a handful, many more, more today, yeah. at the Futures Conference. But you know, part of that, part of our responsibility as crypto companies, uh, is to you know drive that uh, adoption of people using it. And, and if we don't have that, then I think the market is really uh, uh, you know, cornered with, with the same type of players. And, and that is really preventing it from growing a lot bigger than what it can be. And hopefully be seen as a, an alternative currency to payments, right? And um, that you know, regulators and banks would be able to embrace it one day and, and you know, uh, enjoy you know, kind of using it as their, as their kind of extra ammunition uh, to any markets that they have as well, right? So, yeah. Okay. And so the whole point of the platform here is it, it's a low barrier of entry to people. They don't need to do your traditional KYC that they would have to do on other exchanges. Right. Uh, so what limits can they buy in BTC and BCH? Yeah, so because we uh, we collect very basic level KYC, uh, so we collect first name, last name, as I mentioned earlier, mobile number, an email address, and also a voice recording, which is awesome because user generated content, we feel that's very personal. It's a personal touch to it. Um, so we can only buy basically from anywhere between $20 to $500 max per transaction. And and that's basically a thousand per day and five thousand per month, and that's it. And the reason why that's well below the kind of uh, any money laundering. Uh, uh, kind of barriers that, that there, there are problems with a lot of kind of the exchanges that we have. So, you know, you know, with these small amounts, we were able to collect a bit less and we're able to hopefully allow people to quickly onboard. So we kind of have the good fine balance of easy onboarding with a just amount enough KYC information that we can uh, audit basically the customer before we process a transaction, right? So I think that's a very good uh, kind of compromise to what we have. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And curious, do you yeah. store those voice recordings on the blockchain at all? Uh, we actually don't right now, but that's something in consideration for sure. <laughs> something yeah. to think of, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and so you guys actually have another uh utility sort of being developed within the platform. That's right, yeah. And do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm glad to. So we're kind of beta testing this uh, new feature that we obviously we're pull, we're pull live right now to the to coincrypt.com, our website. Uh, and basically, uh, it allows people to now take the Bitcoins that they have and buy gift cards using Bitcoins. And that's a, a perfect example of driving adoption, right? So now that we, we already solved the problem of easy distribution to the customers, the next level is now that the customer is asking, where can I spend it? Well, now we have a platform also, a new product and service to allow them to spend that. So people can basically buy, you know, you know, top retailers gift cards that they can buy, you know, merchandise, you know, at, at top top places and, and, you know, whether it's groceries, you know, products, t-shirts, whatever. Um, so th that's, a, that's a good play for people to use it now. So yeah. I think uh, you're doing a great thing here. A lot of people that don't use the technology would be able to enter this uh, with very low barrier to entry, and then they have a use case immediately uh, with the gift, gift card beta testing that you're doing. So uh, how do you plan to educate a user that thinks uh, you can't spend crypto anywhere, you know, there's no use for crypto, someone who's new, probably your target to onboard, yeah. how do you educate them on uh, the use case? Yeah, the use case, I think this is where the interlapse comes in as well. Like through the public vehicle, we allow, we work with a lot of regulators uh, to kind of get this, uh, get to acquire basically CoinCurve and to be a public company. Um, so with that, we actually, through the public platform, we, we have a lot of kind of marketing kind of preparations and through kind of education into the you know, blog posts, um, getting the message out as well and hopefully telling a story at a very grassroots level that really allows us to basically broadcast what we are trying to do in this space. And obviously marketing is time, it's time, it takes time to build it, there's plans that needs to be put in place, uh, but I think um, the public platform is a springboard for us to hopefully broadcast that uh, message a lot further than, you know, lower level marketing, you know, pamphlets, whatever, or Google ads. So, so obviously that's all in the plan, but I think um, the public platform allows us to basically build that reputation. And hopefully when we speak to institutions down the road, or even now, uh, the credibility is already there because we, we kind of earned that from, you know, getting this platform public as well. So that's kind of our, our bigger initiative. Yeah. yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, the mainstream pays attention to, uh, you know, stock market. So yeah. you're 
you're on the stock market, you're using that platform to educate uh, about what you're offering here with CoinCurve. That's right. Perfect. And so you're, you're talking a little bit about Asia expansion. That's right. Uh, particularly maybe uh, BCH in Japan, uh, or, or, or go into more details about your Asian expansion. Yeah, so the, so the idea is that with the CoinCurve platform, so, so given that such easy uh, to use and low entry to barrier, uh, lower barrier to entry, uh, I mean, um, the idea is that with the amounts that we have as well, $500 max, it's actually built for a market that's underbanked and that has hyperinflation. So we're talking, you know, starting with Southeast Asia, that's our next kind of area we're hitting up. And, um, you know, countries like Philippines, Malaysia, and a lot of other countries in Southeast Asia sector, you know, we're talking even um, Indonesia, Vietnam. I think those are places where we're, we're planning to expand. And those are the places that people do want to buy virtual currency such as Bitcoin and, and use it as well right um, and uh, they don't want to they don't want to they may not want to trade I don't think that's a that's less of a market versus in the, in, in the North American markets or the EU markets they just want to buy and hold and then see value and appreciate and then be able to spend it on food or whichever or gas or whatever down the road so I think the coin Curves product is really built for that mass adoption and that's where the mass comes in um, and this is where uh, you know with our products we can uh, hopefully hit up that kind of uh, that kind of a uh, profile of customers to basically give them a platform that's so easy to use that they don't have to basically sign up and like KYC and wait seven days and deposit funds only to trade, which they might not even do, right? So CoinCurve fixes all that problems and removes all that. We're just really simple and it's easy, plug and play, and um, it's it's really just go to coincurve.com and you can use it. That's it. You know, just sign up, nothing. Yeah. So uh, maybe someone in Asia isn't quite familiar with the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange. Yeah. So how would you get the credibility and the message out to that community as you're targeting the expansion? Yeah, that's definitely a good question as well. And I think. Um, you know, with the Toronto Stock Exchange, it's actually built a really strong reputation globally. So Canadian, basically, stock exchanges, such as the you know, Toronto Stock Exchange, uh, is quite uh, reputable in, in the entire world, right? A lot of U.S. companies even list here, for example, right? And But their, you know, primary business may not be in Canada, but they, they're listed on the Canadian exchange, right? Um, so, for example, Voyager Digital is one of them. I think they're planning to expand to Asia very soon, but they're a phenomenal big exchange that's operating in the U.S. right now. I think over 48 states or, or somewhat, right? So, uh, I think... With that alone, the Canadian kind of uh, public markets and, and the platform, particularly uh, TSX, uh, allows that. Uh, it already built that. So you know, when we head into Asia and these markets and speak to kind of institutions or big businesses, uh, they are probably we can use that as a backing. Uh, you know, kind of ammunition as well to get into these markets so that they understand that, oh, we did get this platform public. We're not just, you know, small players in the private sector trying to do virtual currencies, right? So that, that's a big initiative of ours, and we really want to kind of uh, hopefully help institutions, banks and businesses and hedge funds and whichever uh, down the road to, to legitimize and hopefully make this uh, a very safer thing for people to use and buy and, and, and use, right? So I think that's a, that's a big story of, of ours. Yeah. So you're doing something very noble. I support your cause and I think you're primed for success. So where can everyone go to uh, to access CoinCurve? Give me the website. Yeah, so go to CoinCurve.com, uh, CoinCurve.com uh, basically. It's, I won't spell it, it's pretty straightforward. And then basically once you're on there, you know, fill, go through the flow. Uh, it's really just, you know, a couple of screens, I would say between you know, around six, six screens. And and then, you know, once you're done, you basically coins get sent to your personal wallet. Uh, I do want to say that it's only for Canadians right now, but again, um, you know, hopefully, you know, in a couple months, we will be able to, you know, announce another country, and I'm excited for that as well. Oh, it looks like we have pending news. I won't get into that, though. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us today, Wayne. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.